it's as if the, the the stone is kind of melted from the inside out. There's something to, that has changed to the mineral in the stone. Like this is a big piece of granite. Yeah, I can see it. Yeah, yeah. Wow. There's something very odd that's happened to it. All right, welcome back to the podcast. Um, really pleased to be here today. Joining me is the uh, the Snake Brothers once again. We're doing another video swapcast, and also have a special guest on for this one, Johanna James. Uh, welcome. Hello. <laughs> Good Thank to see you. you again. Oh, I'm I'm supposed to talk now, right? Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, I I joined, followed, tagged along uh, with Ben on the Egypt trip. So I'm just going to jump in and. And I was basically a little sidekick for the whole time, which was great. Yes, it was awesome. We uh, yeah met met in Egypt on the trip, and then you've also started just a, a great YouTube channel. I mean, you've always had a YouTube channel and, and a big following on some other platforms, Instagram and Facebook. But the video work that you've been doing lately has been taking off. Well done with that. I just wanted to say that I, I really enjoy your videos. I think they're really fresh and a great perspective on on all of these these this, these topics, and just a great addition to the all of the other content creators that are making this stuff. So well done. Thank you. I didn't realize how much I filmed until I got back and that I was like, oh, I'll make a vlog of, of the trip. And I was like, oh, actually, I'll make nine. Like there's yeah. so much stuff that we saw and that we did. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. I'm, I'm glad there's more people getting into this and thinking about it and producing good content. And uh, totally not jealous that you got to go on the trip. Not at all. <laughs> yeah. Not at not all. Not jealous at all. Yep. So is this a, this is a model? Is this in a beat? No, this is it. Yeah. <laughs> So so it's the actual thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That would people don't realize how small the dynastic Egyptians were. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's it's yeah. only a model. <laughs> uh, I thought this was interesting. That's just a, a useful way to start it because we'll start with Karnak, one of the biggest temple sites still like standing. Although as big as it is, there were others that were this size, if not larger. Although there's not much left of them. Um, you know, some square kilometers kind of uh, scale. You've got places like Bastet and and Tanis, which were equally as big, if not if not bigger. But these are the ones that are kind of still standing in the up, upper Egypt, up, up on the, up on the Nile, what they call upper Egypt. It's, it's generally like the era of Ramses the second, which I think is kind of the, the, the middle to late period. So they'll tell you like his father said he uh, started it. And then um, it was like a hyperstyle hall was completed by Ramses the second, same thing at Luxor. Although you, you do have a lot of old kingdom, um, objects here so and there's old kingdom writing even like that there's there's attributions to it that that sort of suggest that this place is its roots were, were far far older and i certainly think mm. that's the case too you know I, th I think again it was built on top of what was left from uh previous constructions and incorporated some of these previous things like obelisks and what yeah. were obviously you know thousand ton single piece statues things like the 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 Ramesseum statue and I know it's, it's right at the end of this, but I found we found we found a very interesting piece of a statue that was just mind blowing to me. I'd never seen anything quite like, it. and I think it, it may have been up there with some of the biggest ones in Egypt. Oh yeah, the toe. Yes, well the thumb. This one was the thumb. The, the thumb, the, the, thumb, the thumb toe, thumb. same thing. Yeah, and it's conglomerate too, which is crazy. Toe thumb. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Hand hand toe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this is the entryway. So it's the same thing you see at Luxor too, which is kind of interesting in, in that there's this avenue of I don't know if you officially call these sphinxes these are ram headed sphinxes we'll see the same thing at Luxor and they as they keep excavating and making roadworks in these areas and like in Luxor in the town because that's the other part like these temples are literally in the middle of the city it's like right on the particularly Luxor is right in the middle of a city it's right on the edge of the Nile and they keep digging these up and there's this like massive long avenues uh, of these things look at the height of it and this is like the width of it this is pretty typical for the obelisks you find here and i should i'm gonna this is something that'll happen in a video at some point but there's that scene on the wall at saqqara there's a there's a causeway at saqqara and then on the wall they've got this picture of a boat with these obelisks on the deck and there's like ah see this is how they transported the obelisks from the quarry at aswan to yeah. all these places yeah but the yeah. obelisks are like less than half the height of a standing person and they're they're like a uh, maybe a fifth or a sixth the size of some of these, mm. and it's just it's a different kettle of fish trying to move one of these yeah. pieces than than those other things. But they they take that one scene and they say, ah, yes, see, they floated all these obelisks down on barges. But right. I mean, these are so much mightier than uh, than the the little obelisks that are shown uh, on that on that depiction at Saqqara that gets used as. Oh, there we go. Yep. I would not want to be on a boat 
that was <laughs> taking one of these things down a river. No way. No, it's a scaling problem, like you're saying, Ben. It, it, yeah, yeah, I yeah. think this is the same problem that I think. This, <laughs> yeah, he's he's getting serious there. I think this is the same problem with uh, with modern attempts to do certain things, like with this megalithic stuff. It's a scaling problem. Mm -hmm. They do it with a small block, and they'll say, "See, it can be done." Right. But moving heavy weights does is not a. It doesn't scale up in a linear fashion. It's it's. My right. posture is awful. <laughs> Stand up straight, girl. <laughs> I remember what Yusef was saying here. I, he was talking about, um, it was either this one or the one before, he was saying that there were literally two names that were on the same obelisk. Like one one had written that, and they both claimed that they had made it. So it was proof that people were just tagging this thing. Yeah. And mm, it was yeah. more than likely that neither of them had actually made it. It's all the work here, hand, hmm? by hand. It's all of the, no, no. the hard side. Dun, dun, dun. Here we find again. This is part of the statue, as you can see. And here is the building's money. So let me uh, clarify what he's saying. So it's interesting. It's because it's there's a it's a it's a subtle point. There's a couple things, but when he was talking about uh, the glyphs, the owl glyph here, like that was the question. Like Stefan was asking, like can can you use a stone chisel to get this result uh, by hand on granite? And you're saying yes, you can use corundum or flint or something that's harder than granite. And, they, and no doubt the dynastic Egyptians developed this capability; they were very good at it. You can see that that work. The difference is in some of the objects themselves. So it's it's those flat machined faces. It's the saw cuts. It's the the other. You don't see the evidence for power tools or these advanced tools in the hieroglyphs themselves. And and Yusuf having he's seen everything. He I mean he pretty much contends that he has not seen any of the glyphs, even the really good ones, which are absolutely beautiful, uh, that represent sort of power tools or advanced uh, tooling. So he thinks that all of those were done by hand, as opposed to the objects themselves, which then he he spins around and points at a statue that has you know, a belt on it, but it, the belt doesn't have any names on it where, you know, in most cases you see names written into these belts or, or on, or on the statues. And again, a, a much cruder form of work compared to the object itself. So you, you see that a lot uh, on a lot of these sites and particularly on these giant megalithic blocks that, I mean, it, it fits to me, it, it fits that the, uh, the idea that these were inherited objects with, that were then modified and written on later. It's like Toy Story and Andy. It's like there are these amazing toys and then you see Andy written on the bottom and you're like, oh, Andy made it. The whole thing. No. <laughs> exactly. There you go. There was like a square bathtub-y thing that we, we just panned along. And that Yusef said that he thinks that's machine cut. And you tap it and it sounds like metal. Oh, wow. Really, Over here? He was like playing on it like drums and it sounded like a steel pan, but it was a, it was a made of stone. Oh, oh there it is. Wow. Wow. That thing there. Yeah. He's, and he thinks that that is um, machine. machine, not by hat. Yeah. Machine cut. Yeah. You, you see that in a few different places. Like there's, there's some sort of resonant property. I, I know of examples at Abu Sia. Uh, in fact, there's a, there's a, we didn't see it on this trip. And, I, and maybe they've, perhaps they've moved it because they have moved stuff around since I was here last, which was 2015, I, I want to say, 16 maybe. And uh, at these temples anyway. But there's also like an obelisk at the end. They rope it off, but it, there's a, it's like the, the the 15 feet of the tip of an obelisk. And if you go up and slap that thing, it, it rings like a bell. Like you put you in like, ting, ting. Yeah. it resonates. You, you hit this obelisk and it's just un, unbelievable. Well, I don't want to be too big of a skirt tired here, but that uh, rectangular thing was sitting on two, uh, I don't know, wooden blocks or something. So it's uh, suspended back. and... With any, with any, say, crystalline object or whatever, if you, yeah, you know, if you move those things, if they're if they're resting on what would be natural nodal points or nodal lines in the natural vibration of the object, then it's going to resonate. Yeah. So if you moved it off of one of the nodal lines, like shifted it over a few inches, it may deaden the sound. White calisites, so these structures that are left that were that were made from this this sort of crystalline stone. I wanted to point this out too that these this this these structures appear to have been machined, and in fact there are overcuts yeah. uh, in the in the edges of the walls that you'll see here, and you can see kind of how well machined this is too, and the, the crystal structure of the stone. But you also have these a lot of these areas where there are there are pretty clear overcuts from whatever tool they were using. Gold, this thing supposed to have been cut from a single piece of material, and it's restored, or are those blocks? 
I uh, yes, it's... well, the the roof definitely was all one piece. Oh. It's been put back together in in slots, but um, originally he said it was all one piece of granite, the roof for sure. So, oh, man. yeah, Yusuf says he thinks. Well, he goes, it's not impossible that the the chambers were like on the original original site, and they were just pure cut crystal boxes that resonated, and then the Egyptians came and put all the the glyphs inside. Yeah, and That's that made a... sense. They did have yeah. a nice resonance to them. We were sort of humming and trying to start a choir in there. <laughs> awesome. And it's the same as uh, the the calisite that's been ripped out of the pyramids and, and buried, right? They've recently just hidden all of this crystal that was inside of a pyramid. And I'm like, I, I may have a small piece of it in my luggage. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Didn't hear yeah. that. Yeah. No. Well, we well that's like... Think. You cut that part. They were burying it. <laughs> they were. I was yeah. like, I've got to save a piece of history here. If they're trying to wipe that off the history books. Yeah. No. It's just massive. So the Vatican right. managed to get their hands on an unaltered. An unaltered one. That's what I'm saying. Oh, so it's like whoever. That's an original. Yeah, they, that's they an original. One that hadn't been messed with. They knew what they were doing. They knew what they were doing. Yeah. Yeah. This one obelisk is <sighs> yeah. 800 tons. This one here. This one's around 800 tons, I think. This is the Hapship set, I think they call it. The Hapship set obelisk. Um, yeah. So there's some of the so yeah, we'll get into it, but I think some of the circles with the dots in some places and on statues may have been original um, oh, yeah. markings. Okay, that because they are they are different and they're the only symbols that I've seen that are both polished and and look like that it's possible they were done with uh, with tools and we'll, and some better examples of it later that we'll get into in more detail. But this is the like one that's cut off. So there would have been avenues of these there was yeah. a couple left standing now but there was likely dozens of these obelisks at these sites but yeah they say that i'm just reading this little article here but they're, they're like nobody knows which pharaoh ordered its construction because it doesn't have any hieroglyphs on it <laughs> uh, of course yeah right <laughs> anyway we tell because they always write the name on them funny that <laughs> yeah <laughs> never mind that they've been written over a bunch of times and we you talked about that earlier too like there's there is obvious evidence here i get a whole video on it at at, at at Tanis, where there's so many occasions where these obelisks have been written over and you have guys like Ramses that carve their hieroglyphs very deeply to make sure that it's mm. real hard to, to erase his name because he spent so much of his time erasing oh. other people's names. <laughs> yeah. This is an overcut into some of the granite. Let me back that up a bit oh, and yeah. then look at that again. So it's, it's yeah. this is like a, a saw cut that's like very vertical, like straight, narrow, narrow beam that is again, doing this by hand takes hours and hours and hours of grinding and trying to cut this stuff with a hand tool you simply do not make overcuts there's there's you, yeah. you, you'd have to be here for a day or two soaring away to make an overcut but using power tools you make overcuts so this is like a, you can almost see where it's been backed out here yeah. and started Whoop. again right and you know how, how to explain this with with hand to the whole hand tool hypothesis also this bit this was like the granite and then there was a wall of like sandstone or limestone and next to it and it was like they'd added the sandstone and then they tried to do glyphs over the whole thing but they couldn't do it very well in the granite but perfectly in the sandstone so it made it look like yeah. there it looked like they definitely like the granite was there before it was old and they tried to like smush it onto a building and include it but they, they couldn't get it uniform. Yeah, that's a great point. Yeah, and it does look like they did. They tried to do a good job of matching it, but couldn't quite pull it off. But yeah, look at those, like the, 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 these things there. They just look like something out of Space Age, yeah. the year 3000. They're more impressive when they don't have things written on them, I think. It just, it freaks me out. It's like, that's, why is that, why does that look so modern? But it's one of the oldest things in there. Yeah, I think it's diorite too. I think this might be a big diorite. It gets incredible. And, and it's like and one piece. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. Again, it's the hardest way to make a door. Giant stone <laughs> cut all the way through it. Here's yeah. uh here's a very large he's probably the largest tube drill that I've that I've ever seen. It's probably the largest one on record. Um into rose granite. This one's probably like eight, nine inches diameter. Uh humongous uh tube drill. And you can kind of see it's got that lip at the back end. So it was a, a hollow tube drill that was yep. was made this this cut into the into the rose granite so it's just a giant tube drill and again you, we see this a lot where it's we see half of the hole because i think this this block was quarried later 
you can see on the wide shots just how weird the obelisks do look like they don't fit with the rest of Karnak the rest of Karnak is beautiful soft sandstone that's made up of loads of little pieces and then they've got these huge blocks it just did it I can see how I feel like they were there before and everything else was built around them yeah I, I really get the same sense in a lot of these places I think they're all the remnants of what was left and then they became mm. sacred sites yeah that that looks incredibly ancient yeah unlike the rest it, of them. yeah it's super damaged right like very yeah. very very much damaged and some of this may have been just defacing so this is yeah back into the the main uh granite chamber god look at those ceiling blocks <laughs> yeah yeah they're enormous yeah you did look up and go please not today <laughs> after thousands and thousands of years yeah. don't be the one <laughs> yeah, that would be the end not a single solid piece but it's a box with a lid yeah, he's, he's basically saying that the whole idea of a box with a lid, this wasn't a burial, this wasn't a sarcophagus, this wasn't ever meant to be anything like that. Uh, so why wasn't it, if it was just a table, why wasn't it a single solid piece? But no, no, it's, it's yet again another box with a lid. I kind of want to set this up for the next part because you talked about damage to walls. We're about to see something that's really strange. I can't explain it. Uh, it's 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 some specific, it's like black granite and it's an area that was locked off. We got some special access to kind of sneak in there and take a, a close look at it. Do you hear that? It, it it became a restricted area once they brought attention to this. And he has he has been quizzing Susan Moore and Robert Shock about this, who are geologists, and they don't know what the hell happened to the stone here. They don't have any explanation for it. Uh, and again, like you said, it, it was only after that Yusuf and and um, you know his groups drew attention to this. It became a restricted area, but he's. I mean, we kind of got in there and had a look. <laughs> Jumping the fence here. <laughs> it looks like. I can't really tell, but it is. It looks like. It was, oh, I can't. I can't see what the direction of the damage is. It looks like it's plastered with something and it's falling off. Look at this. It's, it's all smashed up. It's all cracked. Crack like this was going to cause it to fall apart or to fall down, but it didn't. Why? The result here is from an extent that happened in the minerals of the stone. This probably what happened. But what caused it? Can this happen naturally? I, I asked this to who? Susan Moore, my biology teacher, and Dr. Robert Schaff. And we saw a similar example in one of the studies, and then the explanation was on it that said the extent of the stone happened because they moved one to the stone from a quarry to a different location. That, of course, doesn't make, it didn't make any sense to look around the top, and he actually laughed at this. I showed him this, but here is a broken piece, and of course, Susan Moore, my teacher, she, when I talked to her about this, she said, like, that is this, and this, and this. <laughs> Here, here we find the stone. Hmm? Here we find a piece of the stone and another yeah. piece. And we can look, hmm? we can look at this and oh, really yeah. it's amazing because it, it's conclusive evidence that this transformation happened after this slab of stone was shaped. So it's not just the difference in geologic order or anything like that. Remember I consulted. So it's, it's as if the, the, the stone is kind of melted from the inside out. There's something to, that has changed to the mineral in the stone. Like this is a big piece of granite. Yeah, I can see it. Yeah. yeah. Wow. There's something very odd that's happened to it. Uh, and, and really, like you said, shock and, and Susan Moore don't really have any explanation for it. Yeah. Um, and also, I mean, the other interesting thing is that the hieroglyphs probably would have been carved before that happened. Possibly. Yeah. I mean, would they it really try like that, hammering, hand hammering all of that into a shattered stone? I mean, I don't know. Yeah. That's true. That's a good point. Don't you? My <laughs> theories are all blown out now. <laughs> <laughs> In this subject. So we can see Maybe that this did. level is still in its good condition all around. But the core is what changed. Mm -hmm became two different materials. It's not evidence to give form, by the way, because we know where the quarry of granite stone came from. Hmm? It has a clear little 
uh, disclaimer there, and like there's not evidence of geopolymer because we know we know where the quarry is that this stone came from. Mm. Okay, fine. <laughs> and the same case here. So when the inner core, for some reason, extended, these cracks appeared on the surface, and this can happen long time ago, but then for the stone to keep like expanding, mm -hmm. cracking, this can take also thousands of years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can this happen naturally? Yeah, so it's. I think it's possible. Maybe when we look at the writing, that that this this transformation may have started inside the stone, and then it took time to develop. That maybe it, it didn't happen until after the writing was done. On I I don't know. Yeah, uh, but you're right. The, 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 the I'm sure that the the writing must have been done before the. Uh, like at least the, the cracks on the surface emerged. Yeah. Yeah, and it doesn't look like granite at all. I mean, that is no. really weird. It looks, I mean, decomposed granite. Yeah, maybe. it does look like decomposed yeah. granite. But it's you, you're right though, and he's right. He's pointing out that the the basically there's an exterior um, veneer almost. veneer on on what looks like a totally changed inner core. Yeah. Yep. People on my YouTube were saying, oh, well, it's obviously that they've put like a case on the outside. I'm like, no, trust me, it's like one rock. Yeah. And this is, it it's is. just completely changed on the inside. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it looks like the, uh, the, what we're calling a veneer is thicker on the, on the sides on the piece that we were looking at there. Yeah. In some cases, it's thicker. Yeah. It's like maybe a half inch thick in some places and two inches thick in other places. Please say you nick that. No, no. Have you got, no, oh, didn't. damn it. No, we could have done tests. I didn't, I didn't. I didn't bring anything back. I. I yeah, there's bits and pieces everywhere. I. That'd be cool. Yeah, I'd like to see somebody do some some more some more uh, detailed testing on it. But it seemed to happen in this area to to everything here. And Here yeah, we are socially distancing. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. I can tell. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that does look like those little pieces of gravel there. That's uh, decomposed granite. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, it's like dust. Dust, granite dust. Yeah, there you go. Look at that. Oh, no idea. No crumbling. idea. Yeah, it's crumbling apart. Yeah. yeah. <gasps> wow. We should look it up because you can buy this stuff. I'm, I'm sure they. You can post granite? Yeah. Yeah, they probably treat it somehow. Or I don't know, maybe they quarry it like that. No, that's what I was thinking is they found it like that. They find it like that. I, I have no idea. Well, there's got to be a process. This was a major discovery, I think. We we figured out how they move some of these blocks around. You can. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't there there was there was a crane at Karnak, uh, but it it did it break or fall out? No, oh, something there, happened. About there was yeah, a big like tower crane. It was all just bent and smashed. Yeah, yeah. I don't know where that was, you're right. But yeah, this is like ah. Oh, I remember cool. hearing about a crane, and they were like they were trying to move something with a crane, and it broke the crane. And I was like, yeah, okay. So yeah. people did this with ropes and sticks. Yeah, yeah okay, cool. <laughs> where are we going next, Ben? Luxor, Luxor Temple. Luxor. Think, so these are all supposedly Ramses II because they all have his cartouche on them. <laughs> and of course, these are the statues that Chris Dunn analyzed. And and if anyone hasn't seen them, I have, they're in my. Um, series on precision and ancient high technology, particularly the one on precision, that you know he took these great pictures of some of these heads and, and sort of did a reverse transparency where you over you basically you cut the photograph in half and then you 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 reverse it and you overlay it on top of um, the original image at like 50% transparency so you can see just how perfectly symmetrical things are and they're they're just yeah. incredibly symmetrical. So and he's also done that analysis on my it's my desktop image in fact of all of the different the common radius curves and cuts that we use to make the faces um it, they're almost beyond human in their precision that's why I, I like to describe yeah. it it's like they're, they're... yeah they don't look human when you look them in the face it's it's a face but it's not like a human face yeah that doesn't make any sense but it, you know what i mean <laughs> i do i do know what you mean they're idealized almost abstract it, abstract yeah you know they have all this detail it's all the cur and, and I think it's a combination because we we talked with this we had our engineer buddy on the show to talk about this you know and he he does uh, machining work with metal now it's mm. small scale right but he's worked with machining tools and everything and he talked about and Chris Dunn talks about the same thing that that all these common circles that are found in these faces may indicate tool radius you know like a, an arm swing for a specific tool yeah right. And and so and and our buddy was on here and he was like, yeah. So tool changeover is a big deal, especially if you have some enormous machine that's cutting something like this. 
Yeah. But you want to use the same arc as many times as possible before you have to switch it out for a shorter arm or a longer one to get a different arc. Yeah. Right. And so when you can find like three basic circles that make up three mm -hmm. dimensions of all these things, you're just like, okay, they had to use three tools and that's on purpose so that you don't have a lot of tool changeover because that takes a lot of time. It, like it's laughable that these faces were carved by hand i don't know anything about carving anything and i can see it it's like it it just looks like a 3d rendering of something it's right. mad good point about whether or not it's happened before multiple times you know that's the sense we talked about that in south america possibly that the megalithic builders may have come across the work of the monolithic builders you know the, yes. the hun and pacha stuff and who knows if this happened here before it's it's and, and the best, I, I love using that example of we're doing the same thing. We are inheriting, we are renovating, we are reusing, we are labeling, you know, and it's just, it, it's just human nature in a lot of ways. We just keep recycling stuff. And, and for sure, we've been around for 400,000 years as a species. We know that from the, from what is in the current fossil record, I think potentially that window could be as long as eight or 900,000 years we know that yep. from the date that we split with a common ancestor with the Neanderthals. So that's the potential window. And just to, to imagine that, you know, we, our civilization yeah. is the last 6,000 years and that's it. It's like, come on. That's, yeah. And, we, and, and we, then, the, of course, a, a more, an, another part of it is how many of those other hominid, you know, right, right, brother right. species or sister species could also do this kind of stuff. And yep. this is why, you know, we we're talking about this when we we're looking at the stuff in Peru and you were just like, this is, it's so strange. But what if it was built by someone who yep. was not homo safe safe? You know, it was exactly. like a different kind of human, a different kind of hominid. And that's yep. part of why it's so eerie. You know, it's, uh, I mean, I don't know if that's even possible, but it's a, it's an interesting question. I, I, th I think it is. I, I think it is possible because you have things like the Denisovan bracelet. You have we, yeah. and we just don't know. I mean, we we they had bigger, they had brains like ours in a lot of cases. Even like Neanderthals had a larger brain. Larger Who, brain. Who's yeah. to say? And we're just that warlike and that aggressive. I mean, that's the way we run it. We we just may have been the we've been the ones to finish them off. But yeah, that that great video, that Exerba video, like where the last humans left. I I think there's a yeah. good chance that some of this ancient ancient stuff uh may have involved other forms of of hominid i mean it just yeah, yeah. i don't i certainly can't rule it out uh and again it's just I love that tolkien world man bring it back yeah Come on. yeah yeah where are the, exactly. the elves wouldn't and the dwarves it, and the, wouldn't yep. it be wild if that's <laughs> yeah if that was like the way it really the way was. it was yeah. possibly, you got it bang right? on that was complete truth that's yeah. right <laughs> yeah. yeah and we're like what a great story this is amazing no mm -hmm. it's real Hang on. he <laughs> knows real yeah stuff. well yeah. and and it, it also extends to that, you know, like other senses, other capabilities, like that could explain right, yeah. some of this stuff, right? There's, mm -hmm. we just, we're operating within this, we frame everything from, you know, it's how we see it, how our technology works, how, how we've developed as a civilization. We frame everything in that context. And I really do think some of these answers and explanations could be outside of it. And it's just, I mean, it's a tough answer to go look for uh, to, and it's tough to drop that, that context, but yeah, I mean, we, if it, it's just we know that we don't know everything. And in a hundred and a thousand years, we may know we're going to know a lot more about the fundamentals of nature, our own history, all these things. And it just it seems naive and arrogant in a lot of ways to to declare these things all, all solved when it's clearly there's aspects of it that aren't solved. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's also interesting to me, you know, I mean, getting more speculative here, but different what I guess what you could call like Earth regimes, you know, like many cultures have this idea of like different suns representing different ages. So you got the, you know, we're in the fifth sun right now. And it's already it was already very old when the, the Mayans were talking about it being the fifth sun. They're like, this is they depicted it as being ancient, wrinkled. It's old, the fifth sun. Yeah. And it's the fifth sun because there were multiple ones before and each one of those suns like an age or whatever ends in a cataclysmic destruction and a rebirth of everything in a completely different regime. You know, it it's could some of those regimes have just resulted in a, t a completely different kind of consciousness, even within homo sapiens. Like if the electromagnetic field was different in, in terms of earth and it was strange, yep. more powerful vibrated differently. I don't know if the sun was putting out different energies. I have no idea, but could that make if constants we weren't constant? Yeah. Could yeah. we, could it make us perceive everything? Why do yeah. we think that we are better? Because we 
we basically delegate so much stuff to machines so that we don't have to do it and we think we're really clever like yeah. i don't even have to know where i'm going because my car tells me yeah, yeah. and and yeah. we think that's like the ultimate tech <laughs> and intelligence and i'm like but what if previous yeah. civilizations were just super intelligent but in a different stream and so it'd be like if us showing them a battery for an iphone they'd be like what then they would show us their technology and we'd be like well, like, yeah, That's so like, that what? seems I more probable. This my brain, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah so like, I, I just, just think I just <laughs> think it and my friend can hear it and I have to use this phone to do the same thing. thing. I think yeah. we're, we're doing the same sorts of things or the same tasks, but we're just doing different technology, different yeah. ways around it. Right. Different, like different technology was was focused more internally to, to the way the the human or Denisovan or whatever, whoever they were, organic to how yeah. they function. They were, they were developing. They just, their technology went on a completely different, yeah. different route and they developed yeah. different types and yeah, were able we, to do things like we can't even imagine. That's right. Yeah. We have the electromechanical yeah. approach to problem solving yeah. and, and they may, and it seems clear that builders had a much more organic approach to like, you just wouldn't, you wouldn't have built some of these things out of the stone unless you had a way to do it that was much easier than than how we find it. And and I, I think I've probably given this example on podcasts before, but I, I love the idea that eventually that organic nature of technology becomes superior. So if you extend our uh, technology field far enough, like we're into space, and so the first when we really go into space, we're making spa big spaceships made from composite lightweight materials, but when you get big enough and there's plenty of science fiction that's explored these topics when you get big enough and you and more and powerful enough where you say you're a type three whatever a type two kardashian yeah civilization where you can harness it when you can start to harness the fundamental forces of nature like gravity then spaceships stop, don't look like spaceships anymore they start to look like planets and moons and things that can form their own gravity their own atmosphere even they could contain like that's yeah so and you get back to this like you're now back to these organic materials you're not you don't have a need for composite high strength lightweight materials because the weight doesn't matter to you anymore or the you know these these the restrictions that we have on it don't matter anymore and that's you know you, you all sort of end up you our technology chain eventually ends up there assuming you know thousands of years in the future right yeah um and you know who knows i, I just they may have progressed more down that organic path than we have yet uh I don't know. I just, I, I definitely think that it's some of these answers sit outside our current perspective. And it's just an always something to always keep in mind is, is that we are always looking at stuff through our lens, our perspective. And, you know, we're not, we don't have all the answers and just I wish we could admit that. And then we might, you know, go and uh, investigate yeah. it to maybe find something, learn something. But as long as we're, we're insisting that we know this was done because these are the tools that we have in the, archaeological record and so therefore that's how it was done then you know that's not we're not going to yeah. get to the answers that way enjoyed looking at those sites again yeah thank yeah. you guys reminiscing so much. yes Indeed. the old times ben the old times <laughs> the old times <laughs> for anyone who is umming and ahhing about joining one of these trips it is worth it it's so worth it like it it is a once in a lifetime opportunity to go and see these things and you will be getting something that isn't the the tourist like the mainstream track that you would if i'd just gone to egypt i could have gone to egypt at any time and yeah. i'm so glad that i did this one because yeah you would have just i would have missed 90 percent of what you showed me if i had if i'd just gone myself so cool. do it i'm just plugging you there ben plugging thank you, you. There you go. Yeah. yeah no i mean my plan is to hopefully do them at least once well once a year probably be max but that you know in that in that area i, I do intend to do more thanks guys it's been a lot yeah. of fun Indeed. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Cool. All right. Good Thanks, night. Guys. Good night. Have a great time. Thank you so yeah. much.